Hi, Timmy. You having a nice laugh, are you? I mean, it's Christmas. It's Christmas morning. Hey! I love the way it makes me feel inside. What's up, everyone? Adam from FWCI. This is The Office Australia, uh, episode one, IRL. Uh, I haven't seen any good things being said about this, but I'm curious to check it out because anytime there's like a reboot, it's usually pretty doomed. It's usually uh, trying to recreate something that can't be recreated. And this is obviously a remake of a remake of a remake, <laughs> but I'm a huge fan of the US version and uh, I think it'll be interesting and fun to sort of look at who the different characters are and the different Australian take on it. So I'm hoping that it's very entertaining and that I enjoy it. And who knows, maybe it ends up becoming a pivotal cornerstone of the channel, but I'm cautiously optimistic. When I think of international remakes that completely crashed and burned, the first one that comes to mind was the US remake of The Inbetweeners. It was just unwatchable. And then on the other end of the scale, I, I'm currently watching Ghosts, the UK version, which is the original. There's a US version of that that's apparently quite successful and good. So you never really know what you're going to get. But Australia, we, we don't do a great job of remaking American content. We need to stop trying to do that and find our own voice. But quirky comedy is definitely my jam so we're gonna have a watch of the office australia season one episode one irl you know sometimes i wake up in the morning and i'm just like ah, i don't want to go to work today and then i remember these guys i get excited get that tingly feeling in my chest well we've reviewed our flexible work practices and given the low attendance rates flinley craddock can no longer justify the cost of our office spaces yeah we're going to close the regional branches and everyone will go remote. Everyone's going remote? Uh oh. If we bring everyone in, I guarantee we can make a year's worth of rent by the end of next month. $300,000. But if any of your staff members complain about being forced to come in full time, you are not to blame it on aid office. Why would I do that? <laughs> yeah, all right. We know exactly where this is going. Even this opening sequence is. Pretty shit house. <laughs> it really is. Flinley Craddock instead of Dunder Mifflin. I don't know. This whole thing just. <laughs> this is a very desperate attempt to remake something very. I don't know. It's hard to. It's hard. I'm just gonna wait until it's over. <laughs> I started as an intern, like I was Sebastian. Oh. She's been doing that vampire shtick for over seven years. I want to suck your blood. <laughs> Can I sit? Yeah. Down, thanks. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, G'day. Hi. Sorry. Yep, sorry. Just... Well, I'm just... I had to drive in from Woi Woi, so... Christ. <laughs> Lloyd, you've got quite a drive. The bad news, and get this, Alicia comes in this morning and tells me that head office are forcing us to come back to the office full-time effective immediately. What? <laughs> and I'm not surprised. We have lives, you know. People have homes and, and pets and children and, and partners that we'd rather be spending time with, so yeah. Also, even people that don't have some or any of those things because they've sacrificed all of it for their career, it is still frustrating Ugh. i imagine this is not working they michael scott's a very unique character and steve carell is probably the only person that could make that character actually work and I feel like Michael Scott, there is a significant difference between him and the main lead that Ricky Gervais plays in the UK version. But this one feels like it's Michael Scott 2.0 and it's, it just reeks of desperation. I'm promoting you to productivity manager. Oh God. Sort of like good cop, bad cop. Yeah, yeah. Which, which one am I? B bad cop. Yeah, I need you to ride that sales team. Oh. So who are they, who's filming this? Have they mentioned anything about this being a documentary or given that any context? <laughs> There's not enough <laughs> fibre in my oh. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Don't get a hemorrhoid. 
When are the standing desks arriving? You will simply be standing at your old desk, Greta. But they're the wrong height. If you have a problem with my plan, take it to HR. I got my jacket back. You can collect it from lost property at the end of the day. Oh God, she's already very annoying. Well, like order food. Food? Put it up. What else? I mean, I sometimes listen to music. I guess. Get it up there. Food, music. <laughs> yeah, fuck it up. What a unusual concept for trying to increase office morale. Food and music. Um. Yeah. If you signed your contract more than three years ago, probably. Is this some kind of travel subsidy that I could get? Um, so that's Deacon from What We Do in the Shadows. Is he going to eat his boschetti? Looks like someone's selling office chairs today. Oh my god, that's my chair. Mm -hmm. <gasps> what? I just wanted to touch base and just see how you guys were tracking up there in Brizzy. Uh, no, we're still in the office. Where are you? Did, did Alicia come in and send all you guys home? What? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, I don't want to get into semantics, Mum. Yeah, but that was an option. That is a legitimate option. What does semantics actually mean? <laughs> I don't, oh, she is just doing my head in. <laughs> right, about half an hour ago, somebody, who will remain nameless, walked into my office and accused me of lying. Yeah, because you are. And I was protecting you. From who? From yourselves. You know, some of you might be thinking, oh yeah, I'd love to be at home. You wouldn't, you'd hate it. Deborah would self-harm if she was stuck at home with the kids. Isn't that right, Deborah? Could do, yeah. <laughs> Deborah. I am definitely a homebody. I love cooking, I love gardening, but I wouldn't want to commit to never coming into the office. Mm, yeah, huh? All right, Jim. I need to buy the chairs back, no, no, no. but I've just sold them to some clown for three dollars. Oh, yeah, that was Nick. Nick. Here you go, thank you. I need to buy them back. Tell you what, I'll sell them back to you for four bucks, but under one condition. What's the condition? I get to be Quizmaster. There's a lot of quirk with that character there. It's the only one that's kind of interesting. It's like they've been invited to a party they don't want to go to, but then they get there and they're like, I'm having the best time. I mean, that's how I feel as a viewer watching this. And I'm waiting for the, I'm having the best time part. And it's not coming. Hey, look, yeah, do it all together. Traffic's building up on the M1, so, but I'm keen to zoom. Can everyone please mute themselves? Everybody on mute. Oh my god, this is exhausting. To help our company's bottom line, how much did Lizzie sell all our office chairs for? <laughs> hey, baby girl! Mason, hey. I thought you were coming at five. I finished early. Most important, the people. I love my staff and I told them that today. And to see their faces, Anna loves me. And then to hear them say, we love you, Hannah. Not with words, but... Wow. <laughs> that was fucking terrible. That was absolutely dreadful. Um, the way that you would kind of reapply stuff from a successful show like The Office US into you know a different country with different uh, culture and actors and everything like that, it, like everything that you could have done to keep the charm, you, they kind of just naffed out. I will say that the character um, Lizzie is a Elizabeth. Dirty Diana, um, moving that character, like the Dwight character, into the receptionist role um, is probably a smart idea. It probably opens up a lot of, uh, you know, good potential between the boss and that character. But, I mean, I'm grasping at straws here just to say anything good about this show at all. And who knows, maybe episode two things kick off, but I, I didn't like it at all. The character of Hannah, I mean... I, what's the first thing that Michael Scott does in The Office? What's the plot of the pilot episode? Like, what was our introduction to him? Because I feel like he ramped up into, like, the really despicable and completely unnecessary acts. So yeah, Jan comes in and tells him about the downsizing and he doesn't want to tell the team or something like that from memory. I mean, it's been forever since I watched it. 
I mean, that's, you know, a shit thing to do, and that's establish establishing the character of Michael Scott. But Hannah Howard, which is the character in the Australian version, forcing people to come into work when the company would rather they work from home, it feels a little bit fresh, <laughs> doesn't it? There's probably a lot of people actually going through that at moment as workplaces try to encourage people to come back into the office and stuff like that. So for me, it feels a little bit um, too real. And maybe the world is a bit of a different place now compared to where it was in, what, 2000 and when did this come out? 2005, holy shit. Yeah, it's been 20 years. Maybe the world's not that keen on having a oblivious person in a power of position making everybody's life difficult and being expected to enjoy that. Like I said earlier in the video, uh, Steve Carell was a very unique uh, individual and the way he played that Michael Scott character was kind of lightning in a bottle. It's very difficult to play an obnoxious, inconsiderate asshole and still be a good guy. Ricky Gervais, I mean, I've only seen The Office UK once and it was years and years and years ago. I remember not being that much of a fan of it in general, and not just because of the uh, Ricky Gervais character, who again he was he was just really, uh, really cringy, really grinded my gears. Michael Scott seemed to find a way to be more entertaining throughout there. Like you, you kind of rolled your eyes at Michael Scott, whereas I think Ricky Gervais and this character here. It's like an active gritting of the teeth <laughs> that you kind of feel. But none of these characters came through. Obviously, they're trying to recreate that low energy style of humor that the uh, the USA and, and the UK version, for that matter, have that very dry kind of style. But I don't think that always translates into every single culture and not just culture, but like the verbal dialect and how does the Australian accent, you know, reply with humor and how does it go with different things? And I don't know, I think the Aussie accent can be a little bit boring when it doesn't have any inflection. And this show just was, it looked boring, it felt boring, it sounded boring. I feel for the actors that are in this because yeah, that must really suck if you put all this work into something and then it comes out and people are just not enjoying it. But Honestly, I don't think they should have been making this in the first place. I don't know who thought it was a good idea in 2024 to do an Australian version of The Office. So I can't see myself going back and watching any more of this. I don't know, maybe I will out of complete boredom one day. I don't know. I really don't see me ever wanting to revisit this. But let me know in the comments what you thought about this one. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Patreon.com slash FWCI if you want to support the channel further. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends, ta-ta, and farewell.